guys, welcome back to my channel. So we're gonna be talking on uh, watching another video of Thomas Sowell because I'm really just like, he's so intellectual, a lot of common sense that a lot of people lack these days. And we're talking about black poverty. I'm curious about what he's gonna say about this. I have my own like views through black culture. I'm black, okay? I can have views. But you know, I feel like the black culture today, the community, they do not wanna hear the truth. You, they think you're attacking them, especially when you put down certain things. And we're going to get into it because I'm, I'm not going to stay too long on this intro because I already know I'm going to have a lot to say in this video. So let's get into it. The which they grew up with which was not the culture in which black kids grew up in America today. So they had, there's no gangster rap. Oh, we're talking about rap. Okay. Uh, the, the, there was I already got a lot to say about that, y'all. Available in Germany. Oh, well, let me see what they say. This is his quote, it's not being black, it's a way of life. Unfortunately, the way of life is being celebrated not only in rap music, but among intelligence. What is that word? Intelligentsia is a way of life that leaves a lot of very big problems for most people. Well said. Let's get some more I mean, knowledge, guys. The, the average of, of black kid today, I think, is probably uh, better off, certainly materially, than, uh, say, Ben, ben Carson was. Ben Carson, the famous uh, black surgeon black at Johns Hopkins. Hopkins. Right, right. Uh, Who I is immensely accomplished in every way. Yeah. Right. Uh, I would say that um, certainly the black kids who uh, are growing up today have a higher material standard of living than I had. Uh, the only the difference, difference was that uh, the schools were good when I came along. They were especially good in New York at that time. Because they're not now. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, the kids who grew up that, in that same place where I live, they will not get that same education. Now that can be blamed on somebody, but it has very little to do with what happened uh, 100 or 200 years ago. And it's true in other countries. I mean, uh, in Nigeria, for example, there's a tribe of Igbos who are living in one of the least, least fertile parts of Nigeria. Uh, who were in fact enslaved uh, in centuries past by other tribes and so on. Uh, when, when the British moved in and set up schools, the Igbos went for the schools. By the time Nigeria became uh, independent, the Igbos had climbed above the other groups that had been ahead of them uh, to begin with. So there, but there are all kinds of uh, cross currents of factors, uh, the particular culture, or the particular geography, you run through the whole list of them. Here's, you cite, in intellectualism and race, you cite an observation by the intelligence expert, IQ scientist, James Flynn, that just stopped me cold. After the Second World War, you've got large numbers of, of American troops remaining in Germany. For that matter, there's still several tens of thousands there today. And both black and white American soldiers had children with German women. And Flynn discovered that those children growing up in Germany showed no IQ differences at all. The, the, the black kids and the white kids, the same. Quote, quoting intellectuals and race, Professor Flynn concluded that the reason was that the offspring of black soldiers in Germany, and now you're quoting Professor Flynn, grew up in a nation with no black subculture, close quote. Which means what? Which means they experienced exactly the same mm -hmm. expectations. That's what I was going to say. Yes, they, they, no, no, they, no. They, the expectations are external. The culture in which they grew up with was, was not the culture in which black kids grew up in America today. Yeah. So they had, there's no gangster rap. There was pervasively. Uh, uh, Let me gotta pause it. That is true. That right there. The first sentence when you said there's like no gangster rap. Depending on the culture that they live in, look at look at us now. We're in a culture where everybody's on social media. They follow whatever's trending. They follow like the most socialized person, and it could be for the bad. But that's what people like what black people gravitate toward. What gangster rap? rap. Okay, I'm just say rap. <laughs> okay. Oh my God, I'm not a fan of rap nowadays. Y'all know some actually, I've been listening, you know, there's still gangster rap, but I've, I've still been listening to like a lot of Tupac. But like, 
that rap is even a, it's a little bit better than the rap today. They don't, they don't even rap about nothing today. They rap about getting money, shooting people, having women, and that's it. <laughs> like, that's the culture they're trying to lead on people. And I'm just not with that, okay? I'm not with that. Then you have women, all you do is rap about like how many bodies they got, twerking on people. That's all they talk about. It's really embarrassing. I'm just not a fan of that. I don't care what the beats sound like. I'm all for a good beat. I'm just, that's not what I, I don't like that. I'm just like, it's so, what am I looking at? Oh, I was like, what am I looking at? Um, it's just so degrading, okay? And that's what they put in these girls' heads. And I'm like, this generation, like Gen Z, I actually found out I think I'm part of Gen Z in 1998. I hope not. Uh, you know, anyways, anyways. <laughs> the, it's just so, it's just a bad message to young people. And that's why this, I feel like these new generations and like, they will never, they're, they're coming on. These new generations are being born into TikTok and internet world. And it's just like the culture of like black people. It's embarrassing now. Like it's actually embarrassing. And I don't care what people say. I'm black. I can say this. Anybody can say this. Really, if you see it, you should say it. People just don't want to talk about it. It's embarrassing. It's like y'all don't. You see less black people, black, uh, less black people going to school. More people dropping out to try to like go sell drugs, do um music, trying to get famous quick. And I'm just like, there's so much more to life, but people don't care. They gravitate toward one thing. And I don't know, people try to do something so quick. It's like, what? I'm just like that. What happened back then? Like, they had different cultures. It was also with, like, white people. So, yeah, it's definitely different. You see, they have more gangs out here now. And when kids are growing up in that kind of area, that's what they turn out to. Like, turn out to be. And they've grown up in poverty. A lot of people make it out, okay? I grew up in a bad neighborhood, but we also, my mom tried her best. And I we went the good way. We actually moved out that area and moved to um, Georgia. And we was able to go to a good school and got to get an education. So, I'm just like, it's definitely like, it's ways out. People act like they can't get out. But you have to like want it so yeah I'm de i definitely already agree with that first part rap Whoa, no. so, so here's what i'm getting there was a lot <laughs> there is something about black subculture in america today that holds african americans themselves back <laughs> yeah in fact i he is coughing but let me hurt and say something real quick something else i also wanted to say that um even with the women the subculture in america specifically oh my god you just got people like there's like no role models nowadays in the black like there's like less role models people be thinking um they can judge if they like if they talk about somebody it's like just because they don't go with what they think if, if, that, if that makes sense there's the the subculture in america is so bad and it's, a, it's actually embarrassing for us. And then they get mad with white people. And I'm just like, well, at the same time, look at yourself. We need to look at ourselves in the mirrors, okay? I, I, they I really didn't have to paint on him coffin now. They were petty for that. Uh, black rednecks and white liberals. Because that same let's, subculture. Let's, let's talk about two of your books here. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get those books. Because that very same subculture held white, whites in the South back as well. That in this time, this, this uh, mental testing in the First World War turned up, among other things, the fact that uh, whites in various oh, four or five southern states scored lower on the mental test than, than blacks from four or five northern states. And so it really was a question of the subculture that was there, which was a handicap to both. All right. And so whose job is it to say, Wrong subculture, folks. You're har you're harming yourselves. Well, I would think in an ideal world, the intellectuals might take on that task, but uh, the world that we live in, I've noticed, is not not yeah. ideal. It's not. It's not many intellectuals either. <laughs> what is to be done? Take a look at President Lyndon Johnson speaking at Howard University in 1965. But freedom is not enough. You do not wipe away the scars of centuries by saying now, you are free to go where you want and do as you desire and choose the leaders you please. You do not take a person who for years has been hobbled by change and liberated, bringing up to the starting line of a race and then say, you are free to compete with all the others and still just to believe that you have been completely fair. It's, it's pathetic. 
It's not a question of, there's no you who has the control to be completely fair or completely unfair. I mean, the circumstances are, so someone once criticized the mental test on grounds that the tests were unfair. And, uh, one, and I think it was David Reisman who said, the tests are not unfair, life is unfair, and the tests are measuring the results. But who has control of life? Who has control of the past? Who has control of the culture that people have in the present, which they've inherited from the past? So Lyndon Johnson, he's been, in fact, although good liberal that he was, at least in regard, Lyndon Johnson had a complicated career and changed positions on issues many times, but good liberal though he was at that moment, he was in fact engaging in a breathtaking arrogance. Yes on two counts. One, that white people were the ones who were responsible for where black people stood in the race, that it was up to whites entirely, that blacks, as he described, I mean, I'm putting it in the black people are passive, they're acted upon. That's right, that's right. And then the second act of arrogance is the supposition that somehow the federal government could fix it. Yes, uh, it, it, it is staggering. Uh, but if, if you wanted to be charitable, you could say, well, he said this in 1965. Yeah, but if you say, all right, why are people now repeating it in 2013 when we've had uh, uh, nearly half a century uh, of experience to the contrary? And if you look within the black community, those blacks who had escaped what I call the black redneck culture, they've moved on. So, but it is, it's, in, it's, 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 it's the culture that different parts of the black community had. They were, they were different. Daniel Patrick Moynihan, in his famous 1965 report entitled The Negro Family, The Case for National Action, close quote. Longish, longish quotation, but it gets to something, I believe. Moynihan, the fundamental problem is that of family structure. The Negro family in the urban ghettos is crumbling. A middle class has managed to save itself, but for vast numbers of the unskilled and poorly educated, the fabric of conventional social relationships has all but disintegrated. So long as this situation persists, the cycle of poverty and disadvantage will continue to repeat Interesting quote. When Moynihan wrote those words, the illegitimacy rate among African Americans was 25%. Today, the illegitimacy rate among white Americans is 36%. Among Hispanics, more than 50%, and among African Americans, more than 70%. Yeah. Aside from throwing up your hands in despair, what, 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 what is to be done? First, the first thing to be done is to understand that this was a result of policies begun in the 1960s. This is not a legacy of what happened 100 years before the 1960s. The breakdown of the black family is not a legacy of slavery. No. If you, uh, the, the, the classic study of this goes all the way back to the era of slavery. And they find that most uh, black kids, even under slavery, had lived with two, with two parents. And that was true all the way up until the 1960s. Uh, and so you, if you really want to find out what has happened, what's changed, it has changed since the 1960s. And the fact that, that, that whites now have a higher rate of illegitimacy than blacks had in Moynihan Road suggests that this is uh, something that spreads out. But, but if you look at something else, if you look at those blacks, and look at black husband-wife families, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, poverty rate among such families has been in single digits ever since, every year since 1994. And so, it's, so, we, so if, you look at the, if you look at the external causes, why? Let me hurry up and say something real quick. Um, yeah, that's shot. That's one hundred percent shot right now. Like, it, like we're probably like ninety percent right now. Like, it's so far gone. It's not even funny. There's nobody staying together, and there's nobody like. There's no like man in these families. Like, there, there's just baby mamas and like baby daddies and the drama, and it's bad. The illegitimacy is gone. Okay, when I could say, I could say this again, it is gone. 
the fact that you got women, you have black women just getting pregnant to like, you know, for no reason, because that is happening everywhere, y'all know it. You got dudes getting women pregnant, leaving, go knocking other people up, and then it's just, it creates this unbalanced household, and now we got kids growing up without dads, having daddy issues, and they go out into the world, and that's the reason they act the way they do. It's a whole, literally a whole cycle. This is actually crazy when he ain't even think about that. Oh my God. Didn't have my dad my entire life. My sisters either. That's why I'm just like, it's just like, I don't know. And then it's sad because when you meet somebody and then they be thinking you got daddy issues. And it's like, no, I'm like, I'm a normal person just without a father. But the fact that all of this is like, I feel like it could easily be present, um, prevented, but nowadays, mm -mm. the the but the culture of like black people, I feel like that's what they think is cool to knock women up to like just go on to another thing, having kids, and then after you know after they knock all these people, because you see a lot of rappers like this, they hook up with all these people, knock somebody up, and then later on, like like a year later, they want to try to get their kid. It's embarrassing. It's sad, and I don't know. I, all you can, all I can say is make better choices make better choices man like it make our culture look so freaking bad of course we're the highest rate it's the highest rate and it makes sense it's embarrassing but it do make sense and you know what that's another reason why with the title black culture keeping um, um blacks down that's exactly the reason it's very embarrassing and i don't see that changing no time soon like they just hop off one thing, get onto another. Women do the same thing. It's very embarrassing and it's sad for the kids that they're bringing into this world without fathers. Oh my God, that's this is a lot. <laughs> this is actually like deeper than I thought it was gonna be. But it's really eye-opening when you think about it. They didn't, he said it started in like the 60s. Yeah, because back then they couldn't, they couldn't afford to like leave women they you know you had you had to stay together during that culture that um that time period you needed like that bond there's no bond now there's just hookups and out of here giving people a little stuff and get out of here that's all it is and like i said this culture is embarrassing it's embarrassing How long is husband and wife families and the uh, welfare yeah. single mother and like even white people they're up there too like what the heck the same, it's, it's uh, everybody society and objective things but the, but the results are radically different because the cultures and values are different. So you would, you would roll back welfare. I guess that's the principal policy. You, 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 let's, okay, so what would Tom Sowell do? One, you'd, roll, you'd eliminate welfare, you'd reform welfare. What would you do? Roll it back. All right. Roll it back. And what about affirmative action? Eliminate it. Just gone. Yeah. Colorblind yeah. policy completely. All right. What prospects for that to see? None. No black, no black leader of any standing. I'm talking about a political leader as opposed to an intellectual such right. as yourself. You've got, well, there's you, there's Walter Williams. Is there, do you get the sense that there's a, that, that there's a growing generation, a rising generation of African-American intellectuals who say, enough of this, I'm with Tom Sowell? Well, I don't know if they're there to go that far. There's no point. That would be asking being right. Be, there's no point being reckless. <laughs> but uh, I, I think um, there are people like like uh, Shelby Steele and many others. Uh, Larry Elliott went through a long list, and there are more such people, more such people now than there were say in the 1970s. But in terms of political leaders, all the all the incentives politically offer for, for black leaders to blame all problems in the black community on the larger society. And that mm -hmm. enables them to take on the role of being the defender of the black community against enemies, which in turn uh, creates a situation in which many blacks don't feel that anything that they do is gonna, is gonna help themselves, unless it's true. politically as, as a group. That there's no point. I mean, why, why would you, if you believe what, the, what, that's, what they say, why would you wanna knock yourself out in school knowing that the man is not gonna let you get anywhere? Well, I, one of the most pathetic things I heard in recent years was a young black man saying that, you know, at one point he thought he would join the Air Force and become a pilot. And then he says he realized that the white man is not going to let a black man become a pilot. And he was saying this decades after the Tennessee Airmen had established their reputation in combat in Europe. You know, but, he, but the, the hopelessness Hopelessness is, is one of the big products of the, of the race industry. 
that, that you have you have no chance. I remember giving a talk at Marquette, and at the end of the talk, among the questions was asked, young again, young black man got up and he said, even though I am graduating from Marquette a University, what hope is there for me? And uh, I was going through college when I was nobody in school, that I don't remember so. any black saying that in the 1950s, when there was a lot more obstacles to overcome than yeah. there were when this guy is graduating from Marquette. But you, but you have to pr pr produce that kind of feeling in order to serve the interests of those in the race industry. Final question. <clears throat> maybe, we can, maybe we can think in terms of that young man at Marquette. Well, let, let's put it this way. Somewhere, watching this interview, there's a young Thomas Sowell. There's an African American who's smart and wants to do something with his life. What seems to me, I've all, we've already got one piece of advice you'd offer to him is stay away from the from the racist industry. Stay away from the what, 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 what advice? Uh, race hustlers. What advice would you give a young Thomas Sowell? How do you make something of yourself as an African American in America today? The way anybody else would. You equip yourself with skills that people are willing to pay for. The last part was very interesting. Equip, your, equip yourself with skills people are willing to pay for. That's actually really interesting. Basically, you need to go to school, or if not, just go get some more skills. Because a lot of people, a lot of people lack skills, especially young black men people. They lack skills nowadays because they don't want to do the work. Even like he said, like like the doubt, people doubt the stuff, so they don't try. That's so sad. I feel like nobody should feel that way. Everybody should try their hardest. But yeah, that's why people they don't go to school because it's too hard. They know they're not going to pass it, so they'll rather just drop out and like just say f it. But yeah, this was really interesting, y'all. It's sad. The black culture, it's like, I feel like it can get better, but like, it's only getting worse though because the the bad outweighs the good, unfortunately, in America with black people, even and other races, but like, I don't know, this is definitely a talk people do not like to talk about. You never, they, they, they find it condescending, they find it like hard to, they find it, they just don't, they don't like, they don't like people talking about it because they do think it's an insult. And I'm like, it, well, it, it is an insult. It should be an insult. It's like, we need to wake up, okay? That's what it is. But yeah, I thought that last part was very, like, I just I keep thinking about it. Find your, well, equip yourself with skills people are willing to pay for. Yep. And then you gotta, um, see, like, let's take me for a second, like, for an example. I have a lot of skills. I had, had jobs. I worked at, um, like, I makes like, mostly worked at hospital jobs, worked at PetSmart. I was a pet care associate, so I, like, got a, a lot of tons of customer service. And, you know, that can, you can do that with any job. But when I went to school, I got skills in biology, chemistry, math, like, biology, yeah, biology chemistry, math, psychology, I think psychology, sociology, um, microbiology, um, anthropology. Like, like fit, it's so art science like I, t I got so many skills from like all these classes so yes education is actually very important but there there are other ways to do it if you don't want to go to school but i do think people do need to like get more skills so people can pay for them that's what it is but then it's like when you get out of school it's still hard to find jobs so i'll be like they just waste time but like you got it that's like he said you gotta have that doubt to even try so yeah let me know what you guys think in the comments. Let me know if you guys want me to react to certain news topics. I'm doing a lot of these because I, I love talking about the news and giving my opinion. So I'll see you guys on the next video.